I'm Keith Olbermann and this is The Resistance. The well-dressed man in the neatly trimmed beard was one of the last of the 558 people to testify to the commission. He had been chosen by his colleagues to represent them all, and none of them publicly disavowed what he said nor ever would. His colleagues have been willing to paralyze the nation to affect not just at least 10% of the economy, but to at best inconvenience and to at worst literally threaten the lives of virtually all of its citizens. No matter what entreaties had been made to them, no matter what evidence of inhumanity had been presented, no matter the pleas and protestations, no matter the moving spectacle of horrors, as one of their opponents termed it, they would not listen. They had a mandate to protect what their side believed, and their side had all the money. And then the well-dressed man in the neatly trimmed beard said something that you can still find in the history books today. Of the victims of the inhumanity he and his moneyed colleagues were inflicting, he testified, quote, These men don't suffer. Why, hell, half of them don't even speak English. The man was named George F. Baer, and he was the president of the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad, and his testimony was to the first real public hearing about the hellish, murderous, virtual slavery facing the coal miners of this nation. The commission was called the Anthracite Coal Commission, this was in the year 1903 in Pennsylvania. The miners often worked 10 hours a day, six days a week, for which they would be paid as little as $2.75 an hour. The boys who worked in the mines made as little as 13 cents per hour. And George F. Bear was, as were all the moneyed men of the coal and railroad industries, defending this. Bear had become their spokesman because a letter he had written had leaked and been published the rights and interests of the laboring man will be protected and cared for, not by the labor agitators, but by the Christian men of property to whom God has given control of the property rights of this country. That made him a hero. He would defend the millionaires who sent boys of 12 and 11 and 10 and 9 and 8 years old to straddle a conveyor on which traveled the shale their fathers were sending up from the pits half a mile below the surface. They literally broke up the oversized pieces. Or if they did it wrong, the oversized pieces would break them up and, as the commission heard, could easily take off a boy's hand or his arm or his leg for 13 cents an hour. These men don't suffer. Why, hell, half of them don't even speak English. I've been thinking a lot lately of George F. Bear and the other demons of the 1902-03 coal strike. I hope there is a hell solely for people like them. They exist in all generations. Their view of man's duty to other men, twisted and perverted and unimaginable by nearly all the rest of us, and roundly cheered by the sadistic and the money-obsessed and the comfortable. They exist today. They are the people like... Donald Trump and Paul Ryan and the others involved in the repeal of the often ineffective, long from finished, first step towards establishing the absolute and inalienable right of every man and woman and child in this country to have their health minimally protected through the intervention of the government. That first step they have derisively called Obamacare. Trump and his ilk look at the transplant recipients who gained new life under Obamacare and will now have no means of paying for the drugs to keep themselves alive, and they shrug and congratulate themselves on tax cuts for themselves. Trump and his ilk look at the special needs kids who will have no insurance and see only, quote, liberal tears. Trump and his ilk will look at the as yet uncountable number of poor people who will die because of the greed of the rich, and they will celebrate what they actually believe is a victory. These men don't suffer. Why hell, half of them don't even vote Republican. George F. Baer died 103 years and one month ago, and I hope he is still suffering somewhere. All that he knew, the railroad industry and the coal industry that used to dominate this nation, it's all gone. Without the government, there would be no train service at all in this country, and coal mining is an afterthought no matter Trump's false promises. And child labor is in retrospect impossible to believe. But man's inhumanity to man lives on in Donald Trump and Paul Ryan and in every other so-called human being who fought to repeal the Affordable Health Care Act. Be heartbroken, be terrified, be angry, but mostly be calmly vengeful, quietly, persistently, permanently, 
vengeful to Trump and Ryan and every so-called man and woman who voted for this medieval act, this barbarism, we know your names. We will destroy your careers. We will make you suffer. And like George F. Baer and the mine owners, if any of the religions of the world are correct, future generations will comfort themselves and move forward into the light, driven in part by the comfort of knowing that you, Paul Ryan, and you, Donald Trump, are burning in hell. Resist. Peace.